My instinct tells me not to go. There is nothing of value. It doesn't respond to my weight. I'm not dancing. Not dancing on both. I'm not. What is this? A man? No, not quite. Another child enters my domain, seeking to earn his place. To what do I owe the pleasure, Initiate? Have you come to pay homage to the Priestess Amankul? To honor the once and great ruler of Armanash? Do you seek to look upon beauty so immeasurable that men and women once gave their lives for a single glimpse? No? Perhaps you have a gift, a tribute befitting one of my glory and stature. I thought not. A message from your masters, then? Will you inform me I have concluded my sentence? Am I to be freed at last? But I jest. Your kin are not the forgiving kind. Not even after five hundred years. I know why you are here. To take, as those who have come before you have taken. Already I tire of your presence. State what you want of me. Child. The world once knew of Amunkul, priestess of Armanash. It will again. A beautiful land, second only to its once and more beautiful ruler. Through the long centuries, I have not forgotten my subject's betrayal. 
My own acolytes turned on me, seeking to usurp my rule and seize power for themselves. As their guardian, I was forced to punish them. I keep them here with me, as I am in turn kept by your noble masters. Is that what history records? That I murdered my followers because I resented their beauty? You need only behold their heads to know that was not the case. All beauty is to be celebrated. I ensure none goes to waste. They keep me company far better than when they were whole. Do not speak to me of crimes, mage child. Read upon your history, and tell me you have any right to hold me here. My deeds are tiny compared to that which your kind have wrought. Are you not a mage yourself? I am more than just a mage. I have reached into the depths of your water arts further than any have dared, and even now draw from its ever-darkening power. There are aspects of the water which your masters will not teach you. Why risk upsetting the balance when a simple lie keeps all in check? My home for 500 years. Needless to say, I know it well. Did he frighten you? I assure you he is quite safe. I have come to ask for a lock of your hair. A lock of my hair? Were I to give it willingly, you would find it no easy task. The curse which has kept me so long, unchanged, prevents even a single strand from leaving my head. A pity the same could not be said of my followers. You will need a special blade, a dagger. It is kept in my treasury. Bring it to me. You must think me a fool if you believe I'd hand you something like that. A fool you may be, but I know what you want, young one. It is not so rare a glint I see in your eyes. That blade can help you, for it contains power, far greater than your masters would let a novice wield. In exchange for your assistance, I will allow you to keep it. It was forged from a rare enchanted metal, and dipped in the blood of a wyvern's heart. You will not be disappointed when you learn of its properties. It will respond only to one untainted by the bloodlust which forged it. As such, its full potential remains unwielded. My jewels. My breath. Now my hair. What next? It is but a small request, but what say you? Will you bring me the dagger? Surely a worthy weapon for the mightiest of mages. How did you- <laughs> Make your choice, my pretty child. Be wary, young one. It was not meant for just anyone to enter, nor does it take kindly to the liberation of its holdings. I would see them drowned in the very lake that prevents my leaving. My own element turned against me. I assure you, the irony is far from lost. Eager to leave? I can imagine. Locked. It would be easy to leave handprints everywhere. My curiosity stops short of discovering its contents.
I can appreciate them from a distance, but the thought of touching them makes me nauseous. These two items do nothing together. An old mu- An old mu- An old- Uh-oh. I suppose I should have expected that. Impressive. I wonder if the Masters know about this collection. I know better than to meddle with a God King and his family. The dagger. I can't take it. What trickery is this?
It's locked tight. I can't open it. That wasn't right. I should try that again. Maybe there's an order to this. Okay, that's weird. Is the priestess toying with me? The chest isn't locked. But of course, it's empty. Got it! There's a short length of metal inside. It seems to be a piece of something. There! The prong fits securely into the little hole on the device. I don't want to explore the world beyond the mirror treasury. Having to deal with two priestesses would not be fun. There is a sapphire brooch inside, encrusted with four smaller stones. Better keep it to myself. I cannot... Eager to leave? I can imagine.
better keep... I can't use... My offer still stands, young one. My jewels, my breath, now my hair. What next? Eager to leave? Better keep it to myself. You are most resourceful. I have one last task for you. Only the purity of Lake Lurelai will reawaken the magic of this blade. It must be dipped by my hand, else the dagger cannot resist the curse of my imprisonment. Bring me water from the lake, and you shall have what you came for. I have the water. Finally. I didn't think I was gone that long. Can you imagine? For centuries surrounded by the means, without the means to attain it. My jailers have a sense of humor at least. But they sent initiates, one after the other. Hundreds must have stepped through those doors, each with their trinkets. Piece by piece, drop by drop, I acquired enough to fashion this blade. You created the dagger? Why? It does not matter. With its magic restored, I am now ready. I only require a small lock of hair. A lock? Silly boy! I will not waste the blade's power on a trim! Then what? You must forgive the deception. What do you think of your new home? Why so sad? Does the child miss his mother? She does not remember you. As for your father... Don't talk about my family! What is this? Motivation. I have had lifetimes to divine the conditions of this cage. For an eternity and more, I thought this my endless prison. Yet no cage is inescapable. It may have taken longer than the world needed to forget me, but I have discovered its weakness. The generosity of others. You, my almost mage, are going to free me. What? Simply agree to take my place, and my time here is ended. Before you answer, consider. I can teach you much. More than any of your brethren are willing or able. You dream of becoming the mightiest of mages. I have seen that future, and can help you achieve it. You need only say yes. A small price, you must agree. Why the dagger, then? A mere formality. A ritual. Nothing you won't forget in a few centuries. You can forget it now! I won't help you! Do not be so hasty. You will not find the alternative pleasant. I will leave you here to reconsider. I have learned patience, among other things. When you have made your decision, 
You need only scream for me. Five hundred years. Who could live like that? Unchanging, eternal, decaying within. I can smell time's waste in this dungeon. It's sick with entropy. Even the walls. The shackles, though rusted, are too strong. The maiden is already open to that idea. Not while I'm in control of my faculties. Though merely decorative, I'd prefer to keep my hands off. I need to focus on freeing myself. The cracks in the metal shackle have given way. Now for the other shackle. I have already weakened that. One day, my spells might be powerful enough to counteract this dark magic. Just not today. I have already weakened that. Locked and bolt. This device has come loose from its wall fixtures. The maiden is already open to There is very little I want to touch in here. It's jammed shut, not to mention locked. Sneaking into a woman's bedchamber, such impudence! Etiquette doesn't apply to people like you. People like me? In 500 years, there have been none! You stand before an ocean storm, child. My will is but its waves. All I see is a failed mage, drowning in her own irrelevance. Strong words spoken by those whose heads now line my walls. So choose your next carefully. I offer you immortality and power. Tell me your answer. Why? Are you going deaf in your old age? As you wish. I need only wait for the next initiate. Whereas you, pupil, are due for your lesson. The crab is lifeless. lifeless. 
This isn't something I wish to open in a hurry. Who knows what the priestess considers decorative. I wonder who, or what, Amon Kool was intending to summon to the palace. I smell fine, though I might need a bath after my trials are over. I smell f I smell fine. I smell fine. Finally. I have a lock of her hair. Wait! Don't kill me. I can still help you. Show you the path you seek. To power! I'm listening. There is a tome. Not in any library, but in the hands of one who does not understand its power. You are fated to find both. Assuming you're right, what then? Seek the tome, then I shall instruct you further. She has fallen unconscious. Is this more guile? Should I believe her? Eternal imprisonment is punishment enough. I had better return to the Hallowed Hall. You have returned, Initiate Dark. Your efforts thus far have proven your value to this tower. We accept the lock of hair as proof of your accomplishment. Do not grow complacent. The most challenging tasks lie ahead. The Priestess Amankul lives, despite your opportunity to dispatch her. Mercy is a trait we encourage among all our castes. 
Stand tall in the knowledge that you represent us well. Rest now, then turn your mind to the mountains, where you will need wits as sharp as the eyes that keep watch from there. there no one special at least not yet you you're one of them from that tower most astute what do you want a word and your cooperation I can make it worth your while keep talking I think it's time to revisit the Sphere of Knowledge. <laughs> 